Hello YouTube, today we're going to be looking at a circuit um, involving time varying voltage and we're going to be trying to find the average power absorbed by each component. So I kind of annotated this uh, circuit already so I just labeled I1, I2, and IX and also the voltages across the components. So the given information since the voltage is sinusoidal we know that the frequency of the voltage is 2 radians per second and we can write the voltage then in phasor form by taking the magnitude of the sinusoid uh, multiplied by the angle of uh, theta, which is zero degrees. Uh, and that's a shorthand notation, by the way. So now we're going to look at the each component respectively. So we have the capacitor, which is impedance, is defined by Z of C is 1 over J omega C. And since we have omega and we know the capacitance, we just plug and chug, and we get uh, that to be equal to negative J2. Remember, J is just an imaginary number. And then VL would also the formula for impedance, which is like the resistance of an inductor, um, is J omega L, and J omega L, if when you plug and chug, you get is equal to J times 2. So notice here, there's a big thing to notice with the circuit, it kind of threw me off when I was first looking at it, is that this capacitor and inductor on the right side of the circuit is in what's called series resonance. And series resonance pretty much is you check if omega, the frequency, is equal to 1 over the square root of LC. If you if omega is equal to 1 over the square root of LC, that means your circuit is in series resonant and that section that's in parallel is actually short circuited and all the current follows through the outer perimeter of this circuit specifically. So let's check if that's true. So we have the frequency is 2 and is equal to 1 over the square root of L, which is 1, and C is 1 over 16. So 1 over 16 is 4. Take the square root of that, you get 2. So 2 is equal to 2, therefore this circuit is in series resonance, or at least this component is. So that means the current flowing through that resistor is, is zero because it's short-circuited, follows the path of least resistance. Current will not follow through that component of the circuit. So with that information, I drew and I have the annotated circuit down here, uh, we're going to find the power now. So the power, we're going to use this formula, one-half uh, magnitude of V, magnitude of I, cosine phi. Uh, you can see the derivation I made in the previous video. Anyway, so we know that I2 is equal to zero and I1 is equal to V over R by Ohm's law, um, but since this is in phasor form, V bar is, is 2 radical 2 phase angle 0 over R, and R is given as 1, so this is just the same angle, but remember the units are the same magnitude, but the units are just in amps now instead of voltage since we divided by 1 ohm. And then VL, we can solve by using Ohm's law, IR, but instead of I, it's I bar X, and that is what I labeled down there. Instead of R being resistance, it's impedance, or ZL. So we simply multiply those two together. You remember all these values we determined on the right here or down below. Uh, so we get that to be 4 radical 2 angle 90 degrees. Now how do I get that angle 90 degrees? Well if you look at the imaginary component and you make an imaginary and real axis, notice that J is a value of 1 and that's would be pointing all, um, all the way up the um, imaginary axis which it would form an angle of 90 degrees with the coordinate system so that's how you get the 90 degrees phase angle. So then you would find V of C is the voltage across the ca um, capacitor so we're just finding all the components uh, for the circuit here and we get, um, let's see, where would it go? There we go. 4 radical 2 angle negative 90 degrees. Again, same concept except now the value is just negative because we have a negative j instead of a positive j, so it's just pointing downward. Finally, we have Ix, which since we said, oh, the current flows like just in that direction, we still just get 2 radical 2 angle of 0. Um, which we calculated from I1. So I1 is actually equal to IX, so that's a big thing to note. I'll say that again. I1 is equal to IX because this is in series resonance. Okay, so for now we know the source supplies. Uh, so the source is that battery right there, the time varying voltage is given by this formula. We know the cosine of that angle uh, phi is zero degrees, so we just t put in the magnitudes of the voltage in the current. So notice the magnitude is simply the number in front of the angle sign, because that's all we're concerned with, not necessarily the phase angle, so we just use that two radical two there instead of angle zero. And then since phi is zero, we don't worry about that. Uh, so, or that should be one, instead of goes to zero, I meant goes to one, I apologize. So then we get, 4 watts as the power supplied. Now each component actually dissipates power, right? So we're going to calculate what each component dissip how, how much power each component dissipates. So let's look for R1. R1 is the 
uh, first resistor I1 come in contact with. So I always get P1 using the same formula, 1 half 2 radical 2 times 2 radical 2 is equal to 4 watts. So that, so that resistor dissipates 4, or excuse me, uh, 4 watts, that's correct. R2 dissipates, like we said, it's a short-circuited. R2 is the resistor down um, in parallel. Since it's short-circuited and no current flows through it, that means there's no power dissipated. For the inductor, uh, we have the same formula, 1 half I bar, L bar, uh, V bar, cosine theta, cosine phi, excuse me. And we use the same values, but notice we have to use the phi angle. It is actually negative 90 degrees by V, defined by V of C over here. And that negative 90 degrees causes it the value to be zero. So that means the inductor does not dissipate power. That's a really good concept to note there. What about the capacitor? What, uh, same formula, different phi. The phi angles uh, 90 degrees instead of negative 90 degrees. But look, that also makes it zero as well. So we notice here that the inductor and the capacitor does not uh, dissipate power. That's one thing to know. So only resistors dissipate power in this situation. Isn't that interesting? So the total power dissipated. Well, we have 4 watts from the R1, 0 from R2, 0 from L, and 0 from C. So that means we got 4 watts of total dissipated power. Now by conservation of power, we know that dissipated power equals power supplied, so we have uh, 4 equaling 4 watts, so therefore we're good. And that's how you calculate the power dissipated by each component. A good way to check your work, like I said, is checking if the dissipated power equals the supplied power. Uh, but the big kind of thing to note here is labeling all the components and calculating the respective um, components and impedances and currents so you can actually test for power. So I hope this video helped. I know it was a bit longer than normal, but good luck and happy studying.